It was another regular and beautiful Friday morning. I woke up early as usual, and I was having breakfast with my dad in the kitchen. What I didn't know yet was that this day was going to change my whole life forever. But before I start, if you want to unlock my story and discover all the crazy things that happened to me that day, make sure to hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification. So as we were quietly enjoying our eggs benedict with my dad, we were suddenly and abruptly interrupted by big and persistent knocking sounds at our door, followed by those four words you generally only hear in action movies. Police! Open the door! My dad rushed to the door and opened it. Two police officers were standing. We are looking for Jenna Atkins. Is she living here? I was thinking, oh god, is this because I skipped high school again the other day? Damn, the principal was not playing when he told me he'd take care of my case seriously. Yes, it's me. I live here, I answered. We are sorry to inform you that your dad passed away last night. We found a letter with your name and address and a pair of keys to his apartment. We are deeply sorry for your loss, miss. Sorry, what? Pardon me, officers, but you must be mistaken, I said. My dad is right here, standing up. Actually, he is the one who just opened the door for you. I looked at my dad. He was flashing red. Is he going to die today too? I thought. Thanks a lot for letting us know, officers. Have a good day. And hurriedly closed the door. It was at this very specific moment that I knew something was wrong here. Very wrong. Sweetie, we need to talk, my dad told me. Well, yes, obviously. Dad, what was that? Maybe we should wait for your mother to come back, he said. But I couldn't wait any longer. Seconds felt like hours, and I urged my dad to tell me right away what was going on. What secret were they hiding for so long? And then it happened. The cat was out of the bag. Finally. After almost 18 years of existence, my dad revealed to me the big secret. I was adopted. Well, that explained the blue eyes, I said coldly, probably out of the shock of the news I just had. Then I couldn't speak for hours. My whole life was completely turned upside down. All these years were just built on lies and secrets, I thought. So many questions ran through my head. Okay, so I am adopted. That's a fact now. I know who my dad is, or at least was. But who is my mother then? Speaking of my mother, my now adoptive mother came back home. When she saw our faces, I swear she knew. Maybe my now adoptive dad texted her before, but anyway, she knew. So we just sat down, the three of us, in silence. I started asking questions, a lot of questions, but they couldn't or wouldn't give me any answers. They said they didn't know who my birth parents were because they chose to never open my adoption case, and that for them, I was their daughter and that they loved me, blah 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 blah. Yes, yes, sure, I get it. But what I needed back then was answers. That's the least I can ask for after 18 years of secrets, right? We decided to take some time off of each other so everyone could process what had just happened to our family. My parents went away for a week and I stayed home alone. I couldn't stop thinking about this, obviously. My mind was playing tricks on me and sleeping became a mission. After a few days of heavy and constant thoughts, I decided to ease my brain off a bit and think about something else. I love cooking, so I decided to make my favorite pie. I remember my mom had a very good recipe in one of her cookbooks. I looked for it in our bookcase. When I finally found it, I took it out, and a box fell on the ground as well. And oh boy, what I was about to find out. The box contained hundreds of letters. Letters from my father. My real father. I started reading a few of them and quickly understood that he was actually in touch with my parents for years, probably from the beginning. So that means my adoptive parents knew the whole time who my real father was. They were exchanging letters with him. Not only did they hid those letters from me the whole time, but they also deliberately lied to me when I asked about him. Do they know about my birth mother too, I thought? This was truly unbelievable. The story went a step too far, and I couldn't take it anymore. What was going to happen to me next? I decided to pack up my things and leave the house. I'm gone. I just left a note to my parents. I went to my real father's apartment. Since nobody wanted to tell me the truth, I had to find it out by myself. I was a little bit scared when I arrived. The place was huge and cold. Feels like somebody just died here, no? The apartment was also particularly messy. I guess I know now where I got it from, right dad? On the ground, tons of papers and documents were scattered. I scanned the whole apartment and then went to another room that looked like an office. Again, tons of papers, but more importantly, I found multiple bags, wide open, with cash. Millions in cash. Again, like an action movie. 
I instantly thought, oh my god, was my dad a drug dealer or something? What dark business was he running? Am I the daughter of a cartel leader? Please, Lord, have mercy on me. I had enough discoveries for the week. I kept on browsing the room and then found multiple real estate documents. I didn't pay too much attention to it until I saw my name written on it. I don't know a lot about real estate, but turns out I was apparently a landlord owner with, to my knowledge back then, at least five apartments in town that belonged to me. And then it hit me. In many of the letters my father wrote to my parents, money was mentioned. I didn't understand at first, but now it makes more sense. My father was always asking my parents if they gave me the money he sent, and if they are keeping a bit to pay for my studies. Well, guess what? I never saw that money. Not even a dime. Here we go. Another lie to add to the list. But where did all this money go? Probably in my parents' pockets, but definitely not in mine. I was shocked. I just couldn't believe it. Especially because at that time of the year was when college applications were starting. My dream was to apply for a painting and drawing degree. My parents were totally aware of it. I talked about it for years, but they kept telling me they couldn't afford to pay for my college tuition and that I had to figure it out by myself or just let go of the idea. Instead of feeling sorry for myself, I decided to see this whole situation as an opportunity for me to seize. I took all the money bags with me and went back home. When my parents came back, I exposed them to the truth. The letters, the lies, the money, everything. They went silent, as usual. My mom finally told me that they didn't know how to handle this situation from the beginning and got tangled in lies over the years. What about the money, I asked. We wanted to keep the money for your 18th birthday, but as we got caught up with debts over the past few years, we didn't have a choice but to use it, my dad coldly answered. Do you know anything about my birth mother, at least? And please don't lie to me this time, I asked one last time. They swore to me that they didn't know anything about her. But anyway... None of their words matter to me anymore. So I just left, again. But this time, for good. I packed all my things up and moved to the other side of the country, where my drawing and painting college was. With all the money my father left me, I could afford the college tuition and even rent in a small student residence. A new life was starting for me. A new beginning. I was finally doing what I wished for so many years. Drawing and painting were my escape. And going to college really helped me cope with all the crazy things that happened to me back then. I was particularly enjoying my drawing class. And for the final exam of the semester, we had to submit a collaboration work with one of our classmates. I didn't know a lot of people there. Everyone seemed to already have friends, and I had trouble blending in. So I just picked the first classmate that was sitting next to me, a boy, who also seemed as lost and confused as I was. Are you interested in joining me for the collaboration work? I asked. I don't know. Do you know how to draw well? He asked. Asked. Well, I'm here, so I guess I know how to use a pencil a bit. Okay, let's meet at the library after class, he told me. Well, that's a date, I guess, I internally thought. Blending in wasn't complicated after all. We met at the library after class. The least I can say was that that boy wasn't a talker. He just sat down and waited for me to talk and take the lead. Well, at least he was pretty cute, so things were definitely going to be interesting. As I was getting drawing sheets out of my bag, some of my father's real estate documents I always carried with me fell on the ground. As he was helping me gather things up, he completely froze for a minute and kept staring at the documents. Where did you get those papers? He asked me. Well, boy, you're not a talker, but you're pretty curious. Those papers are private, I told him. No, no, wait, how do you know this guy? The one with his name on the paper, he asked. This guy was my father. He passed away a few months ago. Why? And just when I thought all those stories were behind me, it came back like a boomerang. A whole new episode to this crazy show that was my life was about to happen. Long story short, it turns out that my father was also his father. Yes, you heard me. I basically found out that I had a brother on a regular weeknight at the library. And yes, no need to mention again the fact that a few moments before, I had started to have a crush on him. I need to erase this idea out of my mind right now and real quick. Like me, my brother was adopted by another family. But unlike me, he had the chance to meet my, I mean, our father a couple of times before his death. Actually, he even helped him with all those administrative and real estate papers. He knew about my existence before. My father had told him about me so he could put my name on some of the documents. And you never wanted to find me? I asked. I did want to, I just didn't know how. He just gave me your name, he answered crazy that I had to cross the whole country to finally learn that I had a brother. We talked and bonded for days after that. 
We had so many things to share and discover about each other, but the more we talked, the more I felt like there was something wrong, or at least something that I didn't know and that he hadn't told me yet. Every time I mentioned our birth mother, who she might be, where she could be, he was evasive. He was always trying to move on to another subject. That was weird. How don't you want to know about your birth mother after all these years? One day, I was just tired of it and asked him, Do you know something I don't about our mother? Do we at least have the same mother? Yes, we do. He simply answered. And after hours of trying, I finally dragged out some answers. It turns out that the only thing he knew was that our mother was living in the same city as us. Our birth mother was right here, next to us. I couldn't stop moving around. We have to go find her, I kept repeating to my brother. He wasn't as excited as I was. He was scared to find out another secret, facing another reaction. I totally get it, but I was reaching a point back then where I was like, okay, I've seen enough in the past few months, I can handle one more thing. At least this time I was in control. So I kept trying to convince him. It wasn't easy, but after a few weeks of negotiation, he finally accepted to go and try to see her. During this period of time, I also investigated a lot, and after nights of searching, I finally found our mother's address. We took a car and went to the address. She was living in one of the poorest neighborhoods in the city. I remember us staying in the car for hours, waiting to see her get out of the house before going in, just to see what she looked like. But I was getting impatient. Okay, come on, let's go. We didn't drive this far just to stay in the car and give up. I said to my brother. We knocked. As she opened the door, she stared at us for a few seconds. She knew who we were. I guess the mother instinct never fails you. Are you? She said. Yes, we are. It's us, mom. My brother answered. She let us in and we sat down in the living room. We talked for hours. I didn't even remember all the things we said as there were so many. We finally asked, why? Why did she abandon us? Why did she abandon us? Why did she never try to find us? My father left her after I was born. When he left, he just disappeared with me and my brother under his arms. My mother was devastated. For years, she tried to find us as the police gave up on our case after just a few months of investigation. She thought that all this time we were with my father, growing up with him by his side, and that one day, we would come back. She had no idea what we went through and that me and my brother were adopted by two different families. We were all shocked. Not even the best TV shows have secrets like that. After this meeting, we made a decision with my brother. First of all, we gathered all the money we got from our father and bought a house for our mother, a bigger one. And above all, in a safer and better neighborhood. We then decided to move out of the student residence to live closer to her place. We had so many years to catch up on. Finally, we could enjoy more time together, just the three of us, as a family.